Hi there, I'm Daniel Seberg with Google Developers Live here at I.O. 2013, and I am joined right now by a couple of gentlemen from the Google Play Games team, I want to say, if that's accurate. Um, lead PM, Greg, Greg Hartrell, and PM, Duncan Curtis. Thank you both for, for joining us here. Thanks for Absolutely. having us, Dan. Happy to be so here. So let's start by talking about uh, what Hugo announced today, Hugo Barrow, when he was up on stage, talking about um, Google Play Games service. What is it exactly? What does it mean to developers? Give me kind of the nuts and bolts here. Okay, what we learned today in the keynote is you know, there's incredible momentum around Android in terms of the, the sheer number of installs, and particularly around, you know, it, it's shown itself to be this tremendous gaming platform for, for game developers. Um, and so what we've announced today is a set of services as a part of uh, Google Play services uh, that allow us to effectively bring games to the next level on, on Android and, and a number of cross-platform scenarios. Um, it, it's really around four pivots. The first is, is uh, achievements, uh, so you can have badges that virtual trophies that increase engagement in your game, uh, social and public leaderboards that leverage G plus circles, so you could be you know, number one amongst your friends and maybe not necessarily number one in the world. Um, we have a, a set of APIs that we just affectionately refer to as cloud save that effectively squirrel away state for your game, save game progress, settings, number of other you know, uh, virtual progress that's in games. And the last part on Android, uh, we have real-time multiplayer, which allows up to four player simultaneous play um, with more player, support for more players coming soon. And the theme around this is really we're bringing the best of Google to gamers now, right? The things that we're good at, which is you know mobile and, and, and cloud, and allowing game developers to do what they do very well, which is make fantastic entertainment and, and fantastic gaming experiences. And just to be clear, you mentioned this cross-platform idea, but Android, iOS, I mean, these are services that are going to work across all these devices, and we saw it today in some of the demos where they were actually working with each other. Yeah, that's right. It, 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 part, part of the services is actually uh, providing native SDKs for both Android and iOS, and then our REST APIs effectively allow any developer to integrate across any interconnected device. Um, and what's fantastic about this is, is just, you know, giving game developers the ability to build a community around their games across any number of screens. Uh, so it's it also demonstrative of our commitment to being a, a cross-platform play for, for game services as well. Now, uh, I heard reference to the, you are talking about the leaderboard uh, idea. I mean, far be it from gamers to be competitive. <laughs> um, I'm sure we all know that that's a big, uh, a big appeal to any gamer to be listed in the leaderboard. You mentioned, you know, between your friends, but between sort of the all-time list as well. Tell me about the fact that um, you know, when somebody beats someone's score or you get higher up on the leaderboard, this gets posted on Google Plus. I mean, I can, you know, people, I can actually brag about my, well, my score. Or look, of course, you can always brag about it on Google Plus, but what we're really doing is we're using it as a set of uh, social discovery mechanisms, social play mechanisms around your Google Plus circles. So this is how you're going to find your friends to play with and uh, who you're going to game with and who you're going to compare yourself against. You can also compare yourself against anyone who wants to um, put their score out there publicly. As I said, you can definitely still brag on G+. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Um, and then what about the idea that, you know, if you, as you use different devices, if you do achieve or get to a certain level on one device, you go to another one and sometimes you end up having to play that level again, which can obviously be a little frustrating. Um, as much as you may love the game, you want to kind of move on. Um, but now that will not be the case, right? I mean, you can actually have that kind of right. move from one device and pick it up where you left off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and this, this goes into those cloud save APIs we were talking about, is that because they're cross-platform, game developers now can basically squirrel away the, 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 the game save uh, data. So, so that way, if you've won you know, level 14 on your game and you, you know, on your phone and then decide to go home and pick up a tablet or if you lost your device or have a new device, you can effectively pop open that game and pick up where you left off. And we think that's a, that's a really powerful scenario. Specifically to that service is that game developers will get basically four keys that they'll be able to squirrel away 128K of data. Um, and that's you know pretty good uh, simple surgical tool for, for game developers to, to maintain that state. Um, and then because, again, it's available on Android, iOS, and effectively inter interconnected device, um, we think that game developers will be able to use that in really creative ways to solve this problem that you just described and probably quite a few others. Let's step back just a little bit, if you could sort of talk to me about the, the game developers community um, on play. You know, where, where is this going? What are some of the sort of exciting uh, 
innovations that you've seen in, in mobile gaming? Are there some examples you can point to that are really cool these days? Yeah, I think we've seen a number of partners. We have over uh, 30 uh, launch titles, uh, you know, currently that have sort of used Google Play services. I think Duncan and I have seen some some incredible implementations of the, the game services that we've launched today. Um, one of my my favorites is a, a title called F uh, Frozen Front, um, where they've taken our, our real-time multiplayer and they've effectively created a, a turn-based atmosphere. Um, so it, it, it the, the, this is my, my definition of it. It's a bit of a real-time strategy game. Um, where you move around pieces on a board and then similar to the way like a tabletop game would work, I would send my moves to you and then you see my moves play out on your screen. Um, so I think that's a really clever implementation and kind of like a really engaging experience that comes from that. I, I would say the same. For me, uh, I really do like Frozen Front's implementation, but I really like World of Goo's leaderboard. Oh, yeah. So uh, as you play through uh, World of Goo, it's, a, uh, it's sort of a building mechanic game. And as you proceed through the levels, you get more building materials for your leaderboard. So the way you compare yourself against um, the, other, uh, the other people in your circles is you actually get to build your tower. So the more skillful you are with just the few pieces of building material, material you have, you can actually build a better tower or you can try again. Maybe a slightly different structure will actually get you further along. And since you're there, um, since they actually uh, get your friends to show up in that level with you, that your friends' pictures appear on little clouds for the taller your building goes. The little friends' faces are on clouds that, as, so you can see who you're actually beating. And it really drove me personally to want to just get that, you know, those extra few meters or feet so that I could beat Greg in this case. <laughs> <laughs> not that you guys are competitive. No, 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 no. <laughs> Duncan, <laughs> Duncan hands down beat me in that game. Yeah. And, and what about that, that, that multiplayer component? I mean, how, how much is that becoming a part of the gaming experience within what we're talking about today it's, and going forward? It's really becoming an important element. I mean, one of the really key things that we're launching is um, auto matching. So you'll be able to not just play with your friend, your current group of friends on uh, G Plus and in your circles. You'll actually be able to play with other people within the world. So you can jump in and be like, wow, I'd really like to play a game of Riptide 2. But oh, I know my friends aren't around at the moment, so I'm just going to jump in and choose an auto match player, and I'll get matched up with someone elsewhere around the world. And how does that how does that work? I mean, if I'm that other person somewhere in the world, do I get a notification that no, someone wants so to play? We'll be matching people up who, at a very similar moment, have pressed, "Hey, I would like to play a game with another auto match gotcha. person." Okay. Um, and it would be really nice for um, for players to be able to jump into those gaming experiences whenever they want. Sometimes it's hard to get your friends to play at exactly that right moment. So when it is one of your friends, we um, so let's say uh, I invited you to come play a game and you're in my circles. Um, I said, let's, let's play a game of Riptide 2. You'd get a notification and be like, bing, Duncan Curtis would like to play Riptide 2 with you. Click, um, assume you've got the game installed, you'll po uh, press play and straight into the game and um, our game will begin. Um, so this is going to be a really powerful tool for developers to uh, re-engage audiences with a game that they may have lapsed from playing or as a really great discovery mechanism for me at uh, inviting friends who haven't played the game yet. Because if you haven't had the game installed when I send you the notification, you'll be able to go check it out in the Play Store. Right, right. And, and let's go back, I want to go back to that, that cross-platform or cross-device kind of an engagement. I'm, I'm forgetting the name, forgive me, the name of the game that was demoed with the cars racing on the track and it was going across the different screens. I mean, that was fascinating to see how that nostalgic worked. nostalgic about it. It was right. <laughs> I know it was meant to sort of recreate the idea of the, the, the race cars with the, you know, we yep. had the Anyway, talk me through what that. Yeah, means. absolutely. I mean, we, we have we have a, sam a sample app that is called Nostalgic Racer that allows you to have like a little bit of a retro feel to it that yeah. way. Um, and and, and w what's great about that is is just having the ability to, you know, use those services across a variety of platforms, right? Um, and and so achievements, leaderboards, and, and cloud save are APIs that any game developer can take and, and with our samples or in some of the demonstrations that you've seen integrate those into the title and basically have it work on an Android device, an iOS device, or any other interconnected device as it were. And we, we think that that cross-platform play creates de demonstrations like those and, and adds a little bit of a wow factor that way. But to plus what Dunga was saying earlier, right, is that it's really about developers creating a really strong community of, of gamers that they have across whatever device they happen to have access to. Um, and we know that developers have told us that that's a really important thing for them. Um, and that's kind of been a guiding principle for us designing what we've designed. I think a good way to put it as well would be to say that not only will we, will we, will we enable developers to actually connect people across devices where they want to play, 
but for the first time you'll really be able to add your, you know, your G Plus friends on your iOS device or on your Android device or on the web and all of those communities will be able to feed into each other so people will be around when you want a game. I think that's really important. Agree, absolutely. Um, and t tell me, you know, if you could sort of look into your crystal ball, uh, you know, where, where is this headed? Where, what are sort of like the, the sort of coming developments here? I mean, for any developers thinking, all right, this is awesome stuff today, but you know, even beyond this, is there anything you can kind of point to? Yeah, I think today what we focused on is, is building this really strong foundation for game developers, and, and we, we think of it as kind of a first step in many things. Um, and, and so what, we, what we've heard from our developers is that integrating with our game services have been you know, really fantastic. Uh, one developer specifically turned to us and said, wow, with you know, multiplayer it would have taken me weeks if not months to be able to integrate something that complex and, and frankly deal with you know, the server configuration, setting up peer-to-peer -peer sessions, all of like the, the, the really hard networking problems that come with that. Yep. Um, and that developer specifically were able, was able to do it in, an, in a day. Um, and we were we were pretty impressed when we had heard that, and they they've, and, and they were really uh, you know obviously relieved that it was it was that easy. Um, so I think that you know looking ahead, what we're what we plan on doing is listening to our developers who you know put together these services is, is in their titles and launch it, learn from that, and our frame of reference here is to think about Google Play is really only you know it's 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 just over a year old now, and the momentum that Google Play has created. Um, is, is indicative of the way that Google executes and the way that we deliver on a lot of our, our, our services. We want to maintain that momentum with games, listen to our developers, and improve the services as we go forward. I can't wait until we look back in a year and be like, look how fast we've come forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we'll be, we'll be developing features based on our developer feedback and our community feedback as well. Those are really important to us to choose what, what those sort of next features and wins for us are going to be. That's great. And tell me a little bit about that, you know, the experience of working with these 30 partners and, and, and how they've been to work with. I mean, I'm imagining that this has been kind of an exciting opportunity for them, but also for, for us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a fantastic roster of, of partners. They, they come from actually very different types of studios. I mean, game, game developers, you know, are, are, are very large outfits or, or you know, a, a guy in it, literally in his basement. A small, yeah. scrappy developer. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Most of them from a sort of a traditional game development background, or were, were, were some of them almost starting up in a way looking at, at this Opportunity, or I, the, the truth is, that it's actually been a really healthy mix. Um, huh. we, we've been working with developers like Glue and Game Loft, right? Who have some fantastic, you know, uh, ri really, you know, rich experiences that you know you really feel like when you play them on a, a tablet or some high definition experience. Uh, but then, you know, Duncan brought up titles like World of Goo, and you know, we have you know titles like Mega Jump um, that launched today. I think the other one that we were playing around the office was Plague Inc. Oh, Play Game was really good. Yeah, we've been playing Virtual Families too as well. We've been playing a lot of these games. To be honest, you guys, that's all you guys do all day long is just to it's, play games, right? It's I mean, hard. It, it's, it's, <laughs> you must I don't know how we survive this, on yeah. a normal yeah. day. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. Right. Yeah. Someone's got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else you guys wanted to uh, to mention while we've got you here? No, I, th I think it, it really just comes down to we're really excited to, to see our, our, our partners launch their games today and, and you know create some of the, the fantastic gaming experiences they have. Um, hearing their feedback around what game services provided them, giving them opportunities to engage players, retain them, uh, build discovery mechanisms for them to get their games known, and then frankly just having fantastic experiences that players are going to you know, know and love for, for, for many months and years. Sure. This is just the start. So if this is a race, I mean, we're going back to the car race then? We've just gone off the Literally start line, just really? Gone off the start line. <laughs> okay. We're excited. I'm excited to see what's going to come out of all of this. As are we. All right. Well, Greg, Duncan, thank you both for, for joining us here. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thanks, um, Daniel. That's going to do it for us here at Google Developers Live for now. Um, hang tight because we are going to be right back um, to talk about cloud. Um, guys, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks.